that the whole thing or not? Good afternoon, Mr. Lamoureux. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. Yeah. We can hear you. Good. Much better. I had my microphone covered. Much better. Sure, yes, sir. Chairman. Chairman. Hi, everyone. Chairman. Yep. I'm away, so. <laughs> We're just saying, look like you're camping. We are. Good. Nundio oh, yeah. Bono. Join the meeting. We're just waiting for a quorum. Yes, sir. They all don't respond. The other directors did respond, so they should join shortly. Yes, 
Yes, sir. How are you? You should. You should have. Okay, buddy. Okay, sir. Mr. Steve will be joining us shortly. I'm sure Mr. Verdugo is here. Check on him. Sorry about that. Hang on. <clears throat> hey, Chairman. Hey, Warden. Hey, Drew, see you. Busy. Busy all day. <laughs> it's a good thing. No. Keep you out of trouble, Mr. Yip. Not, not when you're trying to run, run, run an apartment complex. <laughs> no, no. Busy is not good. Okay. I'm just sending the link to Mr. Verdugo. We have trouble getting in. Thank you. No, I was, uh, yeah, I guess because it wasn't Annalise that was sending to me. So I Googled, I was uh, searching for Annalise yeah. the whole time. And I'm like, I don't see a link. And then, what's her name? Ka Ka Katarina? Uh, Ka Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> Crystal. She, uh, her, her all the all the Wyatt emails go to junk actually. Really? Oh. Huh. That's where this Gary. Oh, so you didn't get my email. Mm -hmm. I'm present. How you doing, Mr. Verdugo? Hey, yeah, yeah, my apologies on my tardiness. No problem. Hey Chairman, you have a quorum, sir. Great, thank you. Uh Warden, um, I'll call the Central Falls Detention Center meeting of July 19th, 2021 to order. Um, I'll call the roll. Uh, myself present, Mr. Yip. Mr. Yip, is he frozen? 
Mr. Bradugo? Present. Okay, until we hear from Mr. Yip, we do not have a quorum. I'm here. Oh. Uh, okay. It's, it's, uh, it's my reception's a little shaky right now, so. Okay, thank you. And um, Ms. Fonseca is not here, right? Not at this time. She may or may not be able to join, sir. Okay, all right. Thank you. We do have a quorum. Let's move on uh, to um, the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, and justice Okay, let's move right on to the warden's report. Warden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Directors, good evening. Tonight is the warden's report, July 19, 2021, for the Central Falls Detention Facility Corporation. Uh, as of this uh, time today, uh, we currently have a total of 650 detainees, 521 U.S. Marshal male detainees, 26 U.S. Marshal female detainees, 95 uh, immigration detainees, um, Federal Bureau of Prison detainees seven, and one Navy detainee. Um, average uh, daily population for the month of June was 610 detainees. Uh, currently, uh, our staff FTEs is 206 positions that are filled at this time. Uh, currently, we have 24 staff on some form of leave, uh, mostly uh, FMLA leaves. Um, we, did have, we do have one employee out on unpaid administrative leave, which I'll get into a little bit later in my report. Uh, and we have several employees out on military leave. Um, at this time, there's no positive cases of staff for COVID-19, which is uh, good. We've conducted over 6,000 tests since the inception of COVID, um, and we continue to test staff regularly. Um, out of the correctional officer positions, we have 163 that are authorized, 116 that are filled, uh, 49 that are vacant, and 95 that are active. Out of the positions of sergeant, there are 22 authorized, 17 filled, 5 vacant, 16 active. Position of lieutenant, there are 10 authorized, 9 filled, 1 vacant, 9 active. In position of captain, there are 7 authorized six filled in one day with five of them being active. Um, since last month's report, we've uh, hired several individuals. We hired a registered nurse and another educational specialist, which was good, good to do. Um, we've been operating, this facility been operating with only one education uh, specialist for pretty much since the time I've been here. So I've had the ability to hire a second one which has been paramount to, again, trying to make sure we provide some, uh, you know, programming and, and uh, pre-GED and GED stuff to the population. So um, I beg your pardon, there were two registered nurses we uh, had hired and it was a promotion of Mr. Tomaso uh, to the position of major of programs. Um, also, uh, in fact, today we had um, a class of, for class 49 recruitment, uh, we have 24 recruits that started today, so we're excited about that and uh, hoping that they will certainly uh, be able to hit the floor at the beginning of September. Um, you've me since the last uh, report, we've had one officer resignation and one officer retirement. Um, at this time, uh, there is a shift in the immigration population. Um, a week or so ago it was determined by ICE that they're going to remove all of the medium and medium high detainees that are housed in J1. They're going to relocate them to Plymouth County Correctional Facility, and they will be replacing those back from those this week with some detainees that are coming from uh, the border. Uh, so therefore, this facility will house, with regard to J1, J2 unit, um, a total of up to about 144, 148 um, lows and medium low detainees for immigration. Um, there are no COVID cases for detainees at this time. Um, 
which is good news. And as I said, they, they continuous to be continuously are tested uh, as well. Um, at this time, detainees continue to receive uh, at no cost free soap and free masks and free envelopes. Uh, the phone calls in per day and the free video visits uh, will take place until August 1st. Um, this process will then slowly be tailored off. Uh, based on the fact that visitation has resumed, we resume visitation July 9th. So the attendees do have direct access to their families um, and they have access on the tablets. Um, at this time, uh, about 138 staff out of the 208 are fully vaccinated. We continue to try to encourage the vaccination of, uh, of staff, um, but it, it's a very slow process. Obviously, we continue to work with Rhode Island Department of Health with regard to distribution of vaccines to uh, staff and detainees. And at this time, we have approximately 290 detainees that have been vaccinated, um, 280 that received the first dose. And again, these numbers fluctuate based on the movement of the prison population in and out of here. So, um, as you may or may not have read in the uh, recent articles that have been posted by the Department of Justice. Um, we recently had a correctional officer who's been out on unpaid leave uh, since uh, February. Um, he uh, was arrested for, uh, based on an ongoing investigation by the Department of Justice for conveying contraband into the facility. Uh, this was detected um, by our professional standards unit who did a very good job of identifying the issue and um, again, mitigating it by getting the employee out of the facility immediately on leave, uh, unpaid. Uh, and then the, we work collaboratively with the FBI and the US Marshal Service to essentially bring uh, this case to uh, an indictment. So um, we're, we're happy of the fact that at least uh, we're, you know, we're in this, this process thus far. So um, we had a very positive uh, visit with Judge McConnell, the Chief Judge for Rhode Island. He came in uh, about a week or so ago and did some town halls, which uh, he brought in some individuals from the federal probation. He brought in a professional uh, epidemiologist specialist uh, on a national level, as well as a former detainee who was currently in a HOPE, Hope program. And uh, they did a very good um, informational packet to the detainee population regarding vaccination. So we're currently working on see if we can get our numbers of vaccination up and uh, we're going to continue to see if that can gain some traction. Um, we continue to increase uh, the number of tablets in the facility for the population, which has been very positive. We're, we're hoping that in the next 30 days we will we'll have finalized our one-to-one -one ratio, which has been a little bit installed due to having difficulty getting products in the uh, you know, carts in, but uh, we're hopeful that'll take place. Uh, family visitation, as I indicated, resumed July 9th. So that was a very positive step for the population, no issues. Uh, we did an extensive meal survey program for the detainees to get an idea of what they were looking for. And uh, we're happy to report that effective August 1st uh, or 2nd, there'll be uh, a modified menu with over 50 changes that the detainee population had requested. Uh, so that has since kind of really been a positive, uh, you know, uh, asset on the floor with the detaining climate. Uh, we also looked in the commissary area as well to see what items that they may want to bring into the canteen or whether or not there's certain items they would like to see. Um, a slightly re slow, slight reduction in price as uh, there was concerns with some of the cost factor. And... Um, we're also hopefully happy to report that uh, we've been engaging one of the local um, physicians in the area with regard to the possibility of coming in and providing some clinical services to the population uh, to hopefully expand our health services program here. Um, we've had several conversations with them, a very nice gentleman, bilingual as well, and uh, he seems to be excited to possibly come on board. And we're certainly excited to hopefully bring him on board. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions that the chairman or directors may have. Uh, I do have a few questions, but I'll yield if anybody else does. 
So Warden, um, first, thank you on the uh, modified menu. Um, I think that's a great thing and I'm very happy to hear about that. Um, what is, and I don't expect you to know this right now, but what is the cost of the call, the call program that we're gonna phase out? Um, maybe we can look into, um, you know, I, I, either scaling it down or finding some um, outside money to, to, to possibly pay for that, um, you know, so that people who may not have the right for visitation or may not have the ability um, to have visitation may still have access to uh, make calls. So, if yes, Mr. Chairman, it's a very good question. So, so detainees, Certainly, the detainees have an issue with, with getting visitation or making calls as a cost factor. We certainly would continue to provide, again, a free, a free service to an extent. Um, we wouldn't certainly completely cut them off to have any, any access to their to the family members. So, um, right. you know, what, it's one of those things that we, we, you know, obviously did it due to the pandemic. So if there's a need to, to, to have some kind of support, whether it be again a phone call or through the tablets or something, we certainly would ensure that we, you know, provide that. Okay. And uh, before the next meeting, would you mind just providing me with some information on that, um, sure. just to see what the cost is, um, because it, it, you know, I, I, it, well, right now as we have border detainees, I would I would think that visitation is probably unavailable from at least relatives now. I, and that's the other question I had. Could you just explain that more? Because I know that you mentioned to me, and I think it's very important to note that um, we have an asylum hearings here. Correct. Um, that when, you know, we, we uh, these are border detainees that are seeking asylum, asylum at this point, correct? And right. that we, we, we're, um, you know, processing them, we're feeding them, we're taking care of them. and. It, and I would argue that if they were to be held anywhere, that the Wyatt is is probably the best place without going into, um, you know, uh, the policy issues. Um, so if you can just go into that a little bit, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. So as you articulated, sir, that uh, you know uh, these folks come from the border. We were working closely with um, with ICE to assist them, not certainly assist them, but provide them areas to conduct the asylum interviews. Um, again, we're, we're working with the population with regard to, again, having contact with family, whether they're in the states or not in the states. Um, and certainly same thing there, that if they don't have the ability to have family in the states, that we're ensuring that there's the ability to have a line of communication with your families, whether it be through video visits, phone calls, you know, things of that nature. So we're definitely making sure we facilitate that. Is that what you're looking for, Mr. Chairman? Yes, thank you. Um, oh, and, and I, again, Warden, as you mentioned, I just want to thank um, the, uh, is it the Professional Standards Unit uh, on, um, you know, finding the alleged contraband um, and, and moving forward with that. So, so I want to uh, uh, thank you and, and the Professional Standards Unit for, for catching that um, and that, you know, you're doing a great job down there. Thank you. I will communicate that to them directly, sir. Thank you. Anybody have any further questions? Uh, hearing none, uh, I think the next thing is the Director of Finance Report. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this evening we'll be presenting results for June. Um, the population in June, the ADP was a little bit better than the budget. It was about 610 uh, compared to a budget of 568. Um, pushed our the total revenue is around 2.2 million, uh, which pushed our year-to-date revenue to approximately 13 million. Uh, just doing simple math through six months, 13 million times two would be about 26 million, which would be a good, um, gets us a little bit over the budget for the year. Uh, just looking down the expenses, we, you know, when you have a little bit higher count, you're gonna have higher expenses that correlates pretty much directly for us. Um, especially when you have new intakes, we have a little bit more with detainees, especially detainee care, getting those pods ready and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, other than that, there's not much that's remarkable that I see here. Um, we did eke out a small operating profit for the month of about 23,000. Um, and going down, I mean, our cash is stable. We still have about 250,000 in our bank 
at the end of June. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for any financial questions. Do you have any questions? Okay, um, thank you very much. I don't have any questions. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, regarding the award of the public relations firm. Um, we went out to bid um, for a public relations firm. We received um, one bid, um, which required a minimum amount to be paid every month. That was something that uh, we weren't willing to do. Um, as you know, there are, there are times that we um, have a lot of need for public relations and then there are times that we don't. Um, so what we did was, and, that, and again, this was with the sole bidder, they bid a minimum amount, but they agreed that there would be no minimum amount and that the hourly rate would be $200 an hour. Um, that's equal to or better than what we're paying now. So I don't think it would be an impact to the budget. Um, so that's what's before us uh, tonight to award that bid. Um, does anybody have any questions on it? Uh, it's the, to the Regan Communications Group. It was a sole bidder. So um, hearing nothing, I'll, I'll ask uh, that we award, approve the award uh, uh, to the Regan Communication Group at a rate uh, of $200 per hour. I'll make a motion to award um, to the Regan Communication Group at uh, $200 per hour. And I'll- Is there a second? I'll, yeah, I'll second that. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh, All opposed? The ayes have it. Um, is there any further business? Hearing none, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Motion been made and seconded. Uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Mont, you. I hope to see you soon. Uh, and uh, I hope everybody's at least going on vacation like I am for a week. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm I'm in New Hampshire right now. Well, actually, I'm in Maine right now, right on the New Hampshire border. Tampa. Oh, nice. Going to Acadia? Um, uh, right in, uh, well, Rochester, New Hampshire, uh, up, up in that area. Okay. Okay, Good enjoy. Good for you. I see you, Chairman. Fun. Okay. okay. All right. Be safe, Have everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. All right. Good luck.